Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplify's tutorials. The topic of this video is the Herzberg two-factor theory. It's basically a motivational theory to ensure employees work harder. Uh, well, motivation is a very interesting topic. So I have covered uh, another theory in the past, another motivational theory in the past and would like to continue to do so. So do let me know your thoughts and do also let me know what topics you want me to cover in the upcoming videos. So what is the basis of the Her Herzberg's uh, two-factor theory? Well, the theory believes in uh, engagement, basically engagement with the members of your team in such a way that you get the best performance, uh, best of their performance out of them. Uh, so when and how did did Herzberg uh, come up with the theory? He came up basically with the theory uh, by asking people, I mean he began with asking people uh, to describe situations at work where they actually felt really good or they felt really bad about their jobs, which obviously would directly be linked to their motivation or demotivation levels. Herzberg then believed uh, that money isn't the only factor that drives motivation money isn't the only factor that keeps people hooked on to jobs keeps people interested in jobs and ensures that people deliver the best levels of performance optimal performance in their jobs there are other factors and it is these factors that Herzberg uh, wanted to focus on wanted to draw attention to so that is the basis of uh, the Herzberg two-factor theory so what is this two-factor theory and why it's why is it called so? Essentially and very easily uh, stating it, the two-factor theory consists of two factors. Uh, Herzberg called them the motivation factors and the hygiene factors. Now, motivation factors are the factors that business owners need to include, that business owners need to implement in the business uh, to ensure that employees stay motivated to work harder. On the other hand, hygiene factors are essential factors and with hygiene factors not being present, employees would be demotivated. So they are kind of like the opposite of motivation factors. But the other thing is if hygiene factors are in place, it isn't good enough to ensure motivation on its own. So hygiene factors, the lack of hygiene factors would induce demotivation, but the presence of them is not sufficient to induce motivation. So a combination of this, these two factors uh, would ensure good results for employees, uh, sorry, employers. So let's go into details now. What do motivation factors include? They include things like achievement, growth, responsibility, advancement, recognition. So people's achievements need to be recognized. People's growth needs to be ensured. Employees' responsibilities need to change, need to enhance. They need to advance up the ranks. So all of these factors make sure that employees are made to feel valued in the company so these are motivation factors and what are hygiene factors what are the basics basics like company policies health and safety uh, and all of you know similar policies if you're working in an environment which is hazardous to the employees policies need to be in place to make sure that good standards are being practiced which is also a part of working conditions obviously salary it's essential that people are paid at the standard set in the industry. Status, supervision, and obviously people need to find themselves secured in the job. So the job security is an important element as well. So how, how, would, how would the owner of the business or how would the management in an organization apply this? It's very important to note that one of the most, most important pointers derivations from the theory by Herzberg is that job satisfaction and job dissatisfaction are completely different things. They're not opposites, they, they, they don't cross each other out. So ensuring that an employee is not dissatisfied wouldn't ensure that the employee is satisfied. 
So they're not opposites of one another. They're completely different factors. And there are ways to tackle both of them individually. And that is what this whole theory is about. So how do you apply this? Firstly, you need to ensure that dissatisfaction is eliminated by ensuring hygiene factors are being met. And then you need to ensure that you create conditions for job satisfaction by meeting motivation factors. So by ensuring both of this, you can ensure that people are uh, happy with their jobs, will be retained in the company and could possibly deliver good results for the business. So what are the, what are the shortcomings of uh, the two-factor theory? Firstly, it assumes that there is a correlation between satisfaction and productivity. Productivity is obviously the most important factors. The numbers, the bottom line results are most important factors for organizational leadership and business owners. And there is no real link established between satisfaction and productivity in the theory, which becomes a major shortcoming. It doesn't also provide a way of measuring anything. It doesn't provide a way of measuring satisfaction. So you can't actually gauge if the satisfaction measures that you've put in place are actually making any changes to the uh, to the bottom line results. So you can't amend them. And then satisfaction and dissatisfaction are things which can be gauged by different people in different ways. So there is no generic rule which can be put in place to ensure that every person's expectations with, with, with a job would be the same. So one person would gauge satisfaction in a completely different way to another person. And also, it's, it's also common practice that whenever people are, are happy with their jobs, they credit themselves. And whenever people are dissatisfied, they normally blame external factors. So basically, one of the things pointed out here is that human psychology and the complexity of it is not really taken into consideration. But regardless of the shortcomings, it is still a very important theory to this date and it is important to study it and it is important to understand the viewpoint expressed uh, by Herzberg. Okay, I hope that provides a good introduction and a good basis for you to explore the theory further. I hope that was useful for you. And I thank you very much for your attendance and I hope you continue supporting the content of this channel by liking, subscribing and sharing this content. Please feel free to let me know what you want to see, uh, what, what, what topics you want me to cover in future videos. Thank you very much. Bye.